video is going to be a little bit different than the other ones I've done because typically I do stuff with electronics and wiring up gadgets and whatnot on uh, a lot of my projects. I've done some other stuff too, uh, amateur mechanic, whatnot. Uh, this is something I really haven't dove into before. Uh, today we're going to uh, do a vinyl wrap on the U-Force 1000. When I bought the unit, uh, I wanted the bright orange that almost all of the CF motor units are available in, but I wanted the U-Force 1000, and it's not available in orange. So I went with the next best thing and got anything but camo. No offense to you guys with camo, it's fine. I don't hunt, so yeah, your camo doesn't do me any good. Uh, anyway, what I've done is I've, uh, I've taken all of the bolts off of the front piece here. Uh, if you haven't taken one apart, they're two 10 millimeter bolts. Sorry, my dog wants to be part of this too. This is Tundra. Uh, anyway, there's two 10 millimeter bolts in the top here. There is a one of those goofy little black push clip deals tucked up underneath this corner. It's kind of a pain to get out. Uh, I didn't bother wasting my time with it, but I think if you actually pop off this black plastic bumper, it's probably easier to get to. Uh, I just fought with it and said a few choice words. Uh, there's also a couple of the push-in pins on the bottom side. I went ahead and took the unit off already. I cleaned it, sprayed it down with purple power, and then I took and wiped it down with a duplicolor grease and wax remover that's mostly made for auto body and whatnot, but that way it's good and clean. Uh, when you take it off, there's going to be a black plastic framework here, and later in the video you'll see that. But I went ahead and wiped that down too, wiped all the surrounding areas off, and then I put this blue painter's tape on because the vinyl wrap doesn't like to stick to painter's tape. And when you're working a big piece around, uh, it wants to stick to about everything else. So if you put it in the surrounding areas, then it isn't so bad with sticking. It also will protect because you're going to, the way I'm going to have to wrap this, I think, again, I don't do this normally, so uh, I think I'm going to have to make a few cuts around this light and work the vinyl around this little wing down here. So uh, since I'm going to be using a knife around it and whatnot, you know, in case things get too crazy or whatnot, I don't want to scratch up my lights. So. That's the reason for all the tape all over everything. You watch the professionals do vinyl wrap and you don't see them using tape, but like I said, not a professional. So if you're going to take any suggestions that I have here, remember that there's plenty of videos on YouTube on how to do vinyl wrap. You might want to check them out too. But thanks for coming and watching this. Uh, the channel's still pretty new right now. Uh, go ahead and hit the subscribe. If you like the video, like the video. If there's stuff that you want to see me uh, kind of record and whatnot, throw it in the comments down below. I'll do my best to read them, respond to them, all that stuff. Uh, any suggestions on how I should have done this after it's already done and probably screwed up, who knows? Uh, go ahead and throw those down there too. I'm always interested in learning this stuff. Uh, I'm not going to say that I completely have no experience with vinyl wrap, uh, but it's very minimal. Uh, I used to work for a car audio shop, a uh, little bit of background on me in case you guys didn't know. I'm a journeyman electrician currently, but I did car audio professionally for 20 years. I did work for a shop where the bay that I was working in was directly next to the window tenor who also at the time, again this was 15 years ago, Vinyl wrap wasn't a big thing, but the clear vinyl wrap for the, like, I think they called it a clear bra or whatever, that was starting to become really popular. So I watched him do quite a few of them. I gave him a hand on a couple of them with, you know, position in large pieces and whatnot. That's about the extent of my knowledge on this. And vinyl wrap, I know, has come a long way since then. So we'll muddle through it, see how it goes. I'm not going to lie. I already wrapped the back bed pieces, so I kind of have an idea of how to, how to work with this vinyl. Uh, and it's actually, if you haven't done vinyl before, this stuff seems to be very forgiving. So I'll throw some links in the uh, description below, that way you can actually you know, see the product that I used. 
again, it's it's a 3M product. It's the 1080 series. Color I'm using is gloss fiery orange. I would assume that all of the 1080 series is going to kind of lay down the same. It does seem to have some sort of an air release. Honestly, I didn't read the details on it, but I think I saw somewhere that it's got some sort of air release. So if you get minor air bubbles in it, you can work them out with your thumb pretty easily. It's not too bad. Uh, but you kind of have to think about when you're laying it down how you're going to push the air out. Uh, you don't want to push it into just one giant bubble somewhere. You got to give somewhere for it to kind of go out. So with that said, we'll go ahead and see how this works. I'm going to try to set up another camera too. I'm not a videographer, but I did buy another camera. So we'll see how this goes and uh, maybe we can get multiple shots. Without further ado, let's give it a shot, see how it goes. All right, so we've got our scrap. I call it a scrap, it's actually, you know, not. But anyway, this is what's left over after doing the rest of it. So what I wanna do, I don't wanna cover all of this silver in here. This is all gonna be underneath the hood. And those of you that have one of these units know that the way the hood slides in on these, you gotta get it all goofy with the tabs in there and it's kind of a pain. But when you're doing that, it'll drag against the vinyl. I don't want to give it any chance of messing anything up. So what I'd like to do is just kind of run the vinyl up to this edge in here, and that should be plenty fine. Uh, and then everything right here can stay silver. You're never going to see it. So I've laid this out once before just to get an idea. But if we lay the vinyl up in that area right there, I've got enough to cover over the front corner there. And then you want to make sure that you're going to lay it out where you have enough to cover kind of all the way down and around. This piece, I'll be honest, it's a little tight. It may not quite make it. But we'll see. If we get it laid right the first time, we should be okay. Basically, I'm going to lay it down. I want to kind of stick it right here. Until you use heat, it's not going to be permanently adhered. Uh, so, but we're going to stick it firmly on there. Then we'll kind of stretch it over the fender. Where it's going to get a little bit interesting is when we've got to go around this wing here we're going to have to basically take the vinyl and raise it up to wrap it around this curve here. So it might take me a couple shots. Don't laugh too bad. Like I said, I'm an amateur at this, but we'll kind of see what's going to happen with it. And it's a learning process, right? I don't know. We'll figure it out. What's the worst that could happen? It doesn't turn out. We've got to try another piece of vinyl. I mean, it, it, yeah, that gets expensive after a while, I'm not going to lie, but in all reality, this isn't too bad. It's not too super expensive. So uh, let me go ahead and I'm going to take this over the bench. I'm going to peel part of the backing off here so I, I can work with it and get it stuck at first. And then uh, I'll bring it back over and start laying her down. All right, we've got the main top piece uh, here exposed and if you look at the bottom I've still got the uh, backing on that so it doesn't stick to everything and pick up all the dirt in the garage and whatnot. So we're going to go ahead and give her a little sticky stick here and see, see what happens. want to make sure that you got a position where it's going to catch all of the corners. Your back corner back here uh, where it meets up with the uh, bottom of the window frame, uh, that sticks back past everything, so you want to make sure you got enough there.
kind of a compound curve. So we've got to get the air out of that. We're just going to kind of stick a finger in there and open that up a little bit. Hopefully this is coming out on one of the two cameras. It's coming out. Let me fire up the heat gun. When you heat this, it kind of shrinks, makes it more pliable. Now I have noticed on uh, the back panels that I did, this kind of metallic color here, when you, if you overstretch it, it does change the color. Uh, if you have a solid color, that may not be as much of an issue, but with these pearl glossy colors, uh, it will, kind of change color and makes it light there where you stretched it. So be kind of mindful that you don't want to overstretch. So we got the heat gun here. Uh, it's just an old Black & Decker heat gun. Uh, I've used it for years for stuff. It's got two settings. Uh, I'm using it on the lowest setting here. We're just trying to heat it up a little bit, not a whole lot. Well, I, I guess that would work better. It should be plugged in. Well, let me try a different power source. I forgot my retractable drop cord is not hooked up right now. And I overheated it. And it just tore on me. So, guess we'll try again. just did there, I had heated it before and to take out some of the, the previous stretch from when I screwed it up, but then when I restretched it, it was still hot. So that then from that line up changed the color on me. So you could see a definite line where the pearl and the paint kind of changed. So lifted it back up, reheated it. It shrinks up and then hopefully the color goes back to how it should be. But I don't want to restretch while it's still hot from just heating it. So we're going to let that cool off for a second. 
We'll try to work this side over here that's cool. I did watch a few videos of some other guys doing wraps and everything. One of the things a lot of them say is that when you have excess material hanging off, that can make for difficulty with your stretching and whatnot. So you don't want to have too much hanging off. Um, so kind of keep that in mind if it's getting to be a real bear to work with. Might be because you got too much crap hanging off. So something to keep in mind. Yeah. You're gonna use a little bit of heat and kind of shrink it up a little bit. And then since we're around this edge here, we should hopefully be able to pull her down tight. And then that's going to leave, there's an air gap in here. Once we get it stretched down tight over that, then we can work that air gap or that air bubble out the end back here. a little bit easier too. I've got all this crap hanging off the end of here and you kind of lose track of where your fender actually stops. So I'm trying to get wrinkles out that I see coming in back here. Well hell, my fender ends way up here. So be, be mindful of where your uh, actual working area is. But if I can at least get it around that, I think any other wrinkles and creases should be easily worked out. Obviously, because I had all this stuff kind of hanging out, it was all crumpled up and whatnot. So I'm going to put some heat on it, see if we can get that to kind of relax a little bit. 
and we'll uh, try stretching it around the corner. Once I get all of the main shapes here figured out, then I'm gonna pull the fender off. That's why I left all the hardware off. I'll pull the fender off and that way we can kind of wrap the corners, clean everything up, hopefully have a finished product. So see how it goes. I do still have this corner here to do. So see if we can work this air pocket down. And the goal is to work it down into this channel and then Like I said before about having a whole bunch of extra crap on it, right now I'm trying to work on this. There's a little lip right here. I'm not sure if it shows up on the camera or not, but I'm trying to pull it down. You want to keep even pressure on it so that you don't create little finger wrinkles in it. That's what all these are, it's fingers. Uh, I've got so much extra junk hanging off the bottom here that it's catching up on the bumper underneath it. So we're going to go ahead and trim that off. So we're not playing with more junk here than we have to. fender off because I've already got I've got it worked around all of the hard edges um, there's a little bit on the U-Force 1000 there's a little lip underneath the headlight there uh, I'm not sure if, let me see if I can move the camera if that may have sick okay now that you've all thrown up there's this little lip underneath the headlight here uh, I do have to work it into that but it's kind of hard to do with the unit or with the fender on the unit, so we'll see on the bench how much better we can uh, get it to work in there, and then kind of wrap everything around the corners and see what the finished product looks like. So I'm gonna move over to my little makeshift workbench I got here and set you up over there and we'll see if we can get some good shots of that. And unfortunately on that back corner where I had the issues with it tearing, there is going to be a small spot that's exposed. I'm not rewrapping it for that. To be completely honest with you, I don't know how well my technique is going to hold up in the long run anyway. Because uh, again, I don't do this for a living. So, who knows? This may only last a year anyway and have to be rewrapped again. So, I'm not going to rewrap it for a little barely visible tear that I will literally have to point out to anyone. But at the end of the video, I'll point it out for you because I'm being honest. I know what the biggest pain is. 
about working on this stuff is when you get to this point where you've got it off of the machine and you're trying to do it and it just keeps sliding all over. But you, you, you want something soft on your table, otherwise you're gonna scratch the hell out of the vinyl wrap. So it's, that's the most annoying part. I mean, that, it's, it's time consuming, it's tedious. It's not incredibly difficult. I mean, if I had the, the ambition and the, the time and enough units to mess around with, and I was proficient with it, I mean, yeah, it would be, I don't know, it, I don't see it, it definitely takes technique. I'm not discounting any of the guys that do this professionally, because there is definitely a technique, and I don't have it, but it's, uh, it's not incredibly difficult, it's a skill that you have to learn. All right, so there we have it. I got everything post heated. Um, just go over it with a heat gun and the squeegee, get it nice and hot. I forget what the temperature is that they say that you're supposed to get it to, but I'm not pushing it on plastic. I think they're more talking about doing it on a car where you're working with metal. But overall, I don't think she turned out too bad. It's not perfect. It's got a couple flaws in it and whatnot. I mean, if you got a uh, real close in there, I don't know if it'll show up. There's a speck of something right there. Yep right there won't even focus on it uh the other side i still have obviously have to do that and i haven't wiped it all down yet or anything but you know the other side i think i'm going to try and get the vinyl a little bit further underneath the hood if you get real close in there you can see where i stopped it but i mean it's not that big of a deal and here's where i told you i would show you where i screwed up got a little split right there but like I said, it's a side-by-side. -side. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, there's a couple other little flaws in there. There's a little crud right there. But all in all, for a side-by-side, -side, hell, I've seen factory finishes that look worse than that. So I'm pretty happy with it. I'll finish up the other side, and then I'll take a uh, quick video of it. Oh, like I said, I already did the bedsides. So those are already finished up. And yes, I have a flaw in this one too. There's a little speck of dirt. There it is, right there. What are you going to do? Couldn't get out of it. So, you know, it is what it is. The other side turned out pretty decent. I'm happy with it. You know, uh, I've seen a lot worse final jobs. So, I'm happy with that. It's not a complete loss. So, like I said, I'll get this side finished up, and then maybe I'll explain a little bit uh, through video as to why I chose this color. I had a lot of guys say, well, you know, just because it isn't available in orange doesn't mean that you have to make it orange. Well, I got my reasons. So, we'll uh, cover that. I'll get it finished up, get her cleaned up, and uh, give you a complete tour of it when it's all done. Later, guys. All right, guys, finished product. Got her a uh, little bit cleaned up. Use the uh, Mud Tracks products, so a little free advertisement for uh, Justin the Creator and the Mud Tracks products. I'll go ahead and put a link for them down below. Uh, highly recommend them. They work really well. So, uh, as far as the wrap goes, turned out pretty good, I think. Uh, there's Again, on this fender, a couple little flaws, nothing uh, too serious. However, 
this corner, I was able to wrap without it tearing this time, so that's good. Um, here's a little bit of a flaw right there. I couldn't get out a, a wrinkle real easily, but uh, again, off-road vehicle, it's not really uh, important to me that it's perfect, so I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, just like your normal YouTube stuff, like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Uh, feel free to share the video with anybody you know that would be interested. Uh, let me know in the comments anything I could have done a little bit different. Let me know what it is you guys would like to see next. Uh, CF Moto related with this unit or, you know, I got other stuff sitting around. Should we do something with the old Honda form and Rubicon? I, I mean, I don't know what to do with it, but, you know, that's what you guys are for. Let me know what you think. I don't know. I can do something with the Cutlass. Maybe something with the Rat Rod. Maybe we should put air conditioning in the garage. It is hot in here. So, let me know what you guys think. Have a good one. We'll see you in the next one.